Welcome to Install 109, Verifying Shelf Cabling in Maintenance Mode. The building block videos are targeted at NetApp and partner engineers as well as do-it-yourself customers. Always consult the most recent documentation before starting any work. In this video we will boot into maintenance mode and then run some commands to verify that the cabling we did in Install 108 is correct, as well as identify and resolve incorrect cabling. Like all good professionals, our first step when opening a console session is to start logging the output to a text file. To enter maintenance mode, we have to interrupt the boot sequence as the system is powering up. Press the Control and C keys when prompted. If we are successful, a message will appear stating the boot menu will be available. If not, power cycle the system and try again. There's about a 30 second wait as the system powers up until the boot menu is available. Select menu item 5. You will see some warnings about the damage that can be caused in maintenance mode. This is true for production systems in a failover situation. Our newly installed system has no data and is not in failover, so we answer yes to continue to boot into maintenance mode. There are a limited subset of data on tap commands, and most of them are hardware related. Maintenance mode commands. There are specific commands for verifying the old DS14 fiber channel shelves and commands for SAS shelves. The remainder of the commands are universal. Maintenance mode is external to data on tap, so the commands are not affected by whether 7 mode or cl cluster data on tap is enabled. The SAS admin shelf command gives us a crude graphical view of the SAS shelves connected to the system. What we are looking for is verification the system sees the same number of shelves as those currently attached to the controller. Remember that we have two paths to the shelves so the display will show each shelf twice, once for each connected port. On this system, the, the shelves show a DD indicating drive bays 13 through 24 do not contain disk drives. These are half populated shelves. The SAS Admin Expander map provides a more technical view of shelf connections. The next command, disk show minus A, provides a list of all the disks visible to the system. We are looking for drives that are unowned. This is a running system so the host names are displayed but a new system will only show the system ID. The command we are most interested in is storage show disk minus P because that shows the paths to each disk drive. If we connected the cables correctly, each drive will show an A path and a B path. We use the agar status command to verify the system has a root aggregate assigned so that it will be able to boot into data on tap. The FC admin device map command shows all the fiber channel shelves attached to the system. Remember, there are two connections, so each shelf should appear twice. There are three shelves attached, so we see six listed in the output. Just like before, storage show disk minus P tells us if all drives have an A path and a B path. And we check again for a root aggregate.
The commands used in maintenance mode are the same ones you would use in 7 mode data on tap when the system is running. Clustered on tap uses some different commands. Always remember, if you find a cabling error while in data on tap, you should use a maintenance window to resolve the issues in maintenance mode. Moving cables while data on tap is running may cause aggregates to go offline, resulting in an unplanned outage due to the automatic system shutdown. The previous examples were of cabling done correctly and without any issues. Here are what common issues look like. If a shelf-to-shelf -shelf connection is missing or inoperative, the affected shelves will only show a single path. We can narrow down where the break in the chain is by looking at the device map. The 0D port only shows disk shelf 3, so the break is probably between the B shelf modules of shelves 3 and 2. When we fix the issue, we may see a system message telling us the system is now cabled for MPHA, but we rerun the commands to verify there are no further issues. The next issue we encounter is the disks show two paths, but they are both the A path, which is a concern because if there is ever a problem with the A path, these disks will go offline. And this is almost always a case where the return paths on the last shelf are cabled to the wrong shelf module. Unplug both fiber cables and swap the shelf controller modules they connect to. There may be a delay of up to 15 seconds for the system to recognize the new connections. Just remember, fix the problem at the last shelf in the stack and not the first shelf because the first shelf determines hardware ownership of that shelf stack. Now that we are satisfied with the cabling of the storage controllers as standalone systems, the next step is video install 110 where we learn to bind the systems together into a high availability pair and cable the shelves for multipath high availability to make the systems more fault tolerant.